Rural Heritage on RFD-TV is brought to you by Rural Heritage Magazine, a bi-monthly magazine featuring articles about farming and logging with draft animal power, small-scale diversified family farming and homesteading, and other aspects of our rich rural heritage. Rural Heritage Magazine, borrowing from yesterday to do the work of today. For subscription information, please call 319-362-3027 or order online at www.ruralheritage.com. Heritage Magazine has helped readers borrow from yesterday to do the work of today. The magazine is packed with stories and information about farming and logging with draft animal power, as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. If you or someone you know wants to run a self-sufficient diversified family farm, or just learn how to make a weekend hobby farm more productive, Rural Heritage Magazine is a smart choice. Articles cover a wide range of interesting and useful topics and are written by people living on the land doing the work they write about. A one-year subscription is $34.95 for six issues, 24% off the newsstand price. Sign up for two years and save even more. Order online at www.ruralheritage.com or by calling 319-362-3027. That's www.ruralheritage.com or 319-362-3027. Hot iron is like Play-Doh. You can pretty much do anything to uh, hot iron that you can do to Play-Doh except eat it. So I'm gonna go to the anvil right in front of you there. So I need to flatten a little bit.
bending towards me. I find it easier just to pay the money and get the size you want. But again, now it's cooling you, off. You should always know how to make a pair of tongs. You should know how to make a hammer. You should know how to make a chisel in case you have to make a special. Works in gold, and he's called a goldsmith, a, a silversmith, a silversmith, a coppersmith, a coppersmith. We should actually be called orange smiths. It's going to turn black, and what that is is the iron ox 212 because it makes steam. So the brass brush is actually transferring to the steel. It's a permanent finish, it's not a rust proofing. There's roses that are. Uh, grown by a master gardener. There's roses that are uh, from an average gardener. Got it. Uh, I got a wheel that'd be over here now. Run it up, and then mark each one where you started it, and you always keep the same marks, same place. Same always work one you did way. And you get that all marked, and then you take and drill, drill them out with a half-inch drill or three-eighths, whatever size tenants you make. You can make either one. You get them all drilled out, and then you uh, see when you mark them, you're you're measuring on that shoulder there, on the tenant. But then when you go to put it on, you're out. You're on the end. Right. So they really don't don't look like they're gonna fit. Right. Well, then you got this pull, puller. You can you get one, one started, then you can pull the other one in. They start yeah. popping in then. Yeah. It just always works one way at a time. And when you start, you drive them on. I know the first time I made one. Uh, my God, I done something wrong here. This ain't gonna fit. But so I took it back to old Amish buddy of mine down by McIntyre. I took it down there. And he looked at it. You know, it'll work. He <laughs> said. And uh, he got his poke puller out, and drove it out. See, he said nothing to it. Just gotta have Yeah, but it, it worked good. No, it isn't anything that anybody can't do. But when you first start out, you wonder <laughs> what you got into. But it, it worked good. Do you put the iron rim on them too? Yeah. And then when you get that all together, you take this thing. Of course, these are a little longer than they need to be. Well, you start on there. Well. And then you roll it around when you get to where your last one is, and you set that pointer. Set that on whatever number it comes out as, and count the times it goes around. Right. Well, then they, you set that, and then when you get your iron rolled, you don't weld it or anything, but you'll start at the point where on the end, you know, and you go around the opposite direction because you're on the inside of the iron and the outside here. It's kind of, if you go with the numbers all the time, uh, then it ain't bad. It comes out. But you got to have it rolled. Do you have a roller in your shop then? Yeah. 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 Okay. I got a hand hand crank one. So you roll it cold? Yeah. Uh-huh. But it don't work to roll it. You know, it's so much easier you can lay it on the floor and roll it out. But it won't fit. I don't know. It'll be about an oh, inch, inch and a half short. Really? 
then you will if it's a roll. Now, why? I don't know. But it's stretch. Uh, I don't know. I never did figure that one out. But I know it won't work because I've done it once. The same old guy, he laughed at me because I brought it down to his place. He was going to help me put it in the fire and shrink it on there. <laughs> I got down there and you know, he, he got his roller out, measured the wheel, and that measured the iron. But I, I rolled it when it was flat, and then I rolled it afterwards. And uh, he said, well, that's got to be the wrong wheel. No, I said, I got a mark with it. A center punch marked the iron there. And numbered the wheel so you get the same one. Ah, so this got to be another wheel. So we took another one, and here's the same story. It was, it was, it was short. And then he started to laugh. He said, What'd you do? Roll this one that was in the flat? He said, Yeah, works a lot better that way. Right. Yeah, he said, It works good. But he said, It won't fit. <laughs> He got quite a kick out of that. <laughs> this engine is a John Deere oil field engine. It was made in 1944 by John Deere for the Pure Oil Company. And the engine was shipped to Van, Texas, and it pumped oil for the Pure Oil Company. And when the Pure Oil Company sold out, it went to Michigan and pumped oil for the Leonard Crude Oil Company. Um, the Pure Oil Company bought 118 engines and requested that their engines be painted the pure oil blue and orange and white colors. And then also the Pure Oil Company requested that this engine come with a 270 pound flywheel and then a six belt v-belt pulley on the side so that makes it very unique this engine does have the credentials certified by the two-cylinder club that it was built for pure oil also has the pure oil serial number tag on with also the crude oil serial number tag so this engine was retired in Michigan and it was taken apart and it was bought by Lee Lowing at an, a state auction. It was in six pallets. And Lee Lowing from Cadillac, Michigan, put this engine back together with the purpose of preserving history. So the credit to him preserving this engine is his credit. We usually plow with three, it's just, uh, I don't know, works out better. You can keep them on the plow longer, do more work, and and we've we've plowed with four, and someday maybe we'll get two bottom. We got a two bottom at home and a three bottom. Maybe we'll get up to six, seven, eight, nine. You just never know, so it uh, depends on how many you keep around that are good, so it's good enough to stand all day and wait, so. takes takes time to learn everything you need to know and it's it's not when everything goes right it's when something goes wrong that's that's uh, any anybody can anybody can help you as long as everything goes good it's when something goes wrong is you get, when you have the trouble and we've we've proved to how many times that we'll have people out here different people drive you know and uh, friends and stuff and you can be quiet back here and not tell them nothing 
but they know that through the lines. I don't know how. They do. Well, there's and telegraph back and forth. The horses yep. telegraph to you, and yep. you know, and that's yep. something that's kind of hard to teach people too, to be able to anticipate. Yep. Yep. And yep. It, and it's you, it's a lot got to do with the people. We had a couple girls that used to get babysat by the younger daughter, and uh, they would come. The the older one would come, and we'd go. We one night in the winter we went out. It was dark outside, but good moon. We go out in the, in the pasture, and there's nine of them all facing us around her because they liked her because she was calm and quiet. And they can tell. And so then her little sister wanted to do it. We did the same thing. We went out there, and they all took off for the other end of the pasture because she's a real hyper-type person. So Different personality. you got you got to be the right type of person, too, yeah. in the barn, stains in the barn, and also says girls drive tractors. Those are the bumper stickers. Here's a single cylinder Deutz. Uh, this tractor had a ride in a container to come over here from Europe, probably Germany, but Deutz, and then later years, KHD.
but if somebody gives me a quarter, I'll lick it. side is so I'm going to add more heat on this side of the block so we can move this material easier. Steel always moves where it's the hottest. You ready? This program is available for purchase. To order your copy, please call 319-362-3027 or visit www.ruralheritage.com. Rural Heritage is a bi-monthly magazine dedicated to draft animal farming and logging as well as other aspects of our rich rural heritage. It is published by Mishka Press, which also offers a complete line of back-to-the-land books, DVDs, and calendars. Call or write for a catalog or subscription information. Or visit our website at www.ruralheritage.com.